Hi, my name is Cherie. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this channel, I talk about living life abundantly by strengthening your relationship with Jesus Christ. We do a lot of inner work on this channel, so if that sounds interesting to you, please like and subscribe. Okay, let's get into the video. In this video, I am going to be coming from the book of Ephesians, the last half of chapter five, the beginning half of chapter six. And I'm going to be talking about submitting, honoring, and obeying. Oh my! So in the first three chapters in the book of Ephesians, Paul tells us who we are in Christ. And in the last three chapters, chapters four to six, he teaches us what we should do or how we should live in Christ. There are three different groups of people that we're talking about, that Paul's talking about. It's those who are married, children and parents, and slaves and masters. And before I move on, I do want to just mention that when talking about slaves and masters, it was very common in the Israelites days to work off a debt through slavery. So if they were to um, be loaned something, they would work that off. And it's kind of similar to like if we were to take out a loan from a bank, we work it off to pay similar to that. And this was very common. This was a very common practice. And that's also where the year of Jubilee comes in. So the 50th year, there was kind of like a cultural and identity reset and the slaves would become free. So it's very different from how we see slavery, especially in American culture. So I just wanted to name that when you hear me just throwing around the term slaves and masters. So a similarity that I've noticed in these three different groups of people is comes from Ephesians 5 chapter 15 and it says pay careful attention then to how you live not as unwise people but as wise moving on to 21 submitting to one another in the fear of Christ so why is this important if we're talking about living right as Christians and living in the light um, everyone in their lifetime has been in these different types of categories of submission um, whether it's a wife submitting to her husband a children submitting to their parents or a slave submitting to their master this is a command from the lord and this is the way that we reverence him first wives must submit to their husbands it says in verse 22 wives submit to your husbands as to the lord because the husband is the head of the wife as christ is the head of the church so looking at this word submit um when a wife submits to her husband this is a voluntary attitude the way that this word submit is used in this context is uh can be a military term that means to arrange a troop of divisions under the command of a leader submission means the voluntary position where you put your trust in someone's head of leadership submission is not slavery it's not manipulation it's not intimidation, it's not misguidance, and it's not suppression. In Hebrews chapter 13, um, the word submit is used in a similar way. Um, verse 17 says to obey and submit to your leaders since they keep watch over your souls as those who will give an account so they can do this with joy and not grief for that would be unprofitable for you. So when wives submit to their husband, that means that they're being protected. They're being guarded by their husband. So even when you think about this in military terms, you submit to your leader um, so that your life is protected, right? In the military. So wives are submitting to their husband because he is protecting her life, her soul. And she submits to him as he submits to Christ. And I remember this pastor saying before how he... Um, wanted the, his family to move and his wife submitted to him and said okay let's take a move and although um, that she didn't necessarily want to she when she submitted to that they their family I think he said they had like free rent they was getting free tickets to stuff and just her act of submitting even if the move was the right call or not her act of submitting allowed her household to be blessed Second, children to submit to your parents. This is chapter 6 verse 1. For children to obey your parents in the Lord because this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise. So that it may go well with you and that you may live a long life in the land. This is the first commandment with a promise. So if children, in, if children honor their, and obey their parents, 
their life is longer. So first let's talk about the honoring part. This is basically fixing the value of something. So in one of my previous videos I mentioned a Toy Story jacket that I thought that was valuable and worth it. The worth of the jacket may differ from person to person. You might not think it's worth to buy a Toy Story jacket but the value of it we can't change that because whatever the store says the value is that's the value of the jacket. So although if there are, if your relationship with the parents is not great, maybe it was horrible, maybe they were completely absent, or maybe they were lovely parents, their value is fixed. So we are to honor them. No matter how, no matter what you think the worth was, the value is fixed because those were the parents that the Lord chose for you. So even if they didn't live up to your standards, the standards of being your parent is an important thing to honor and thinking about the obeying part from children this just means to like be under to listen to and to hearken to one's command one thing that I noticed though about obeying someone um, children obeying your parents you might not agree with them but it's still important that you listen to them lastly slaves and masters so similarly to a child obeying their parents a slave obeys his master and he listens to them although he might disagree with them verse 5 says slaves obey your human masters with fear and trembling and the sincerity of your heart as you would christ so when i was looking up the word slave um, i saw the definition body one who gives himself up to another's will whose service is used by christ in extending and advancing his cause among men or another definition devoted to another to the dis to the disregard of one's own interest and when i looked up the word master i saw lord sir or owner so um one thing that i've noticed here in the scriptures is it talks about being sincere when um slaves obey it, their master and being sincere looking up this definition it means incorruption and I was thinking you know when we use the word sincere in the English language we think of it as being genuine being uh, real being true something that's not forced but if you're if in corruption that you might have to force yourself to be incorruptible so you might not like it you might not agree but you have to do it and that's the part of being incorrupted. You're doing it without corruption. In conclusion, even though, um, you know, wives are submitting to their husbands, children obey and honor your parents, slaves obey your master, they're still the husband's job, the parent's job, and the master's job. So the husband's job for his wife is to love his wife as Christ loved the church. That's a sacrificial love. The father's job is to not provoke the child to anger but to train him up in the instruction of the Lord and the master's job is to treat the slave the same way with a good attitude they the way that they treat each other will be received back to them from the Lord so we do all of these things in the Lord to be consistent in the perfect will of God knowing his will being full of the spirit I hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down below. Remember, I love you. I'm here for you and I'm praying for you.